Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Republican Representative Gary Tauken of Bonduel is seeking re-election in the 6th Assembly District. Representative, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me. I have this question for incumbent legislators. If you're re-elected, top priority in the next session. Go. Well, my top priority is to be the Ag Committee Chairman mm -hmm. and to work on issues that deal with agriculture because mm -hmm. agriculture is such an important piece of the economic puzzle for the state of Wisconsin. It's the top economic driver at $88 billion and I want to be uh, intimately involved in setting the direction that we, uh, as we progress as a state. And that's an interesting time to be the Ag Chair yes, with milk prices low and tariffs on cranberries and everything else being debated. So what are, uh, what are your thoughts on going forward in the next session if you're reelected on how to help farmers? Because you have a farming background, don't, don't you? I do. We yeah. have a, I farm with three brothers and my folks, and we have a large farm uh, about 25 miles west of Green Bay. In and this international debate, tariffs, Canada props up its milk prices. Excuse me, thoughts no. going forward? No, I uh, actually, I served on a federal committee, a, a couple of them, the Ag Policy uh, um, Committee and uh, a technical committee that dealt with animal and animal products uh, for uh, both uh, for, from 1999 to 2003. So I've got a background in trade. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of things that are happening on the international level and we do need um, and I'm also serving on the um, c uh, Commerce and uh, Trade Committee on the state level. So we just started that this last session, recognizing that that was one of the keys as we move forward. We're a yep. big trader with a lot of different countries. Uh, NAFTA has been um, a great tool for the agricultural industry. 49% of the dairy products go to those two countries that are sold out of uh, out of the state. Mexico and Canada? Mexico and Canada. Mexico. Thank so, you. So very, very important. Um, some of the issues back in the state budget, there's a bit, there, there is a significant increase in the current budget aid to K-12 public schools. When your local administrators say, thank you very much, we need another big increase in the next two-year budget, how do you respond? Well, Governor Walker was just interviewed by the Shano paper, uh, and I was at a uh, at an event after he had done that and he talked about the two big issues being transportation and education. Mm -hmm. So he plans on putting um, more money into education and the reason we can do that is our economy keeps growing. Uh, with the 2.8% uh, unemployment rate we have everybody that wants a job essentially has a job and so um, so he's looking to and recognizing that education is the key to the future. It opens a lot of doors and um, they're trying to do um, a lot of good things uh, as far as education goes and so I expect funding um, will be um, something that is prioritized in the next budget having the support he has given it um, in the last interview he did. The, um Vouchers and choice program has grown dramatically. Does it, need to, does it need to expand further, sir? Well, I'm a big proponent of the choice and charter schools, and the reason I am is I wanna see children get the best possible education they can. And if they're in a situation where that's not happening, their parents and them ought to have uh, the opportunity to go wherever it is that they can get the kind of education they need. Okay. Um, Local governments have been dealing with levy, levy limits for about 14 years. Mm -hmm. Some local officials say it hurts their ability to provide local services. Do we need to keep levy limits, loosen them, or get rid of them? Well, levy limits are uh, protection for property owners. And uh, what we're trying to do is find a balance. It's tough 
when you're in a local community and you uh, only have the ability to uh, raise uh, levies so far, but you also have the ability to do referendums to find out if the taxpayers in your area are willing to support the changes that you have. So there's the opportunity for people in their local communities to, um, to raise taxes on themselves in order to be able to fund the projects they think are important. You mentioned transportation funding earlier. The impasse in the capital that you've been watching, the gridlock, how should it be broken going forward? How, how, how would you pay for our highways? Well, I think transportation is the 800-pound gorilla in the room. It's the, one, it's the biggest thing we haven't addressed completely, although we uh, did give a lot of money to transportation, and we have the lowest bonding in the last 20 years. Uh, for transportation at about 400 million. So um, I'm expecting that because this is the gorilla, we're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to best address it. I think public safety has and maintenance of current roads have to be given a priority and it seems that that's the direction that a lot of people are looking. They did an audit uh, early last session that looked at some of the problems transportation had and they weren't including all of the um, issues that had to deal with roads and instead of, uh, in, we're in Green Bay doing this interview, and instead of uh, uh, 40, uh, Highway 41 being um, a $400 million project, it ended up being a $1.4 million project because a lot of things like roundabouts and um, and uh, side roads and frontage roads weren't taken into into consideration. So uh, we passed legislation that required um, an update on those projects. And uh, Secretary Ross was recent was appointed last session to uh, lead the Department of Transportation, and he's been finding. Uh, finding uh, surplus funds in different areas and, and uh, really bringing some efficiency to the program. So uh, it's, it's a problem. I do know that in the same interview I mentioned earlier, the governor is planning on meeting with both the Towns Association and the Counties Association to talk about um, what the priorities ought to be moving forward and getting advice from them. So I think that uh, with uh, the participation of the people that are most impacted, uh, we're going to come up with some solution that's going to be hopefully sustainable into the future. Could you vote to raise the gas tax? And what about when tolling is mentioned in the Capitol? Well, all options are on the table as far as the Assembly is concerned. Um, and uh, I think that that's one of the options. Tolling is one of the things we looked at. The problem is that uh, it takes a while to set up and it would be six years actually before we were able to uh, get any kind of uh, consistent revenue from it. So so there's problems with that and there's costs on the front end. So um, I think that's an option, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be something that we're going to look at. Or As I said, the good thing that we have going for us is the economy is growing and uh, hopefully it would be nice if we can do it without tax increases. Um, I, if that's something that we need to do, though, I think it needs to be addressed, and we need to get this thing figured out. We've uh, kicked the can down the road long enough. The debate over the Department of Corrections budget, the prisons in Waupun and Green Bay were built in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Do we need a new state prison? Well, I think we need a new prison, but uh, the, the concern I have is that we need a comprehensive uh, study of the whole system, the correction system, to, to, to uh, make sure that we're going down the right path and, and, uh, and providing the most efficient uh, uh, product we can to the, to the people of the state. We want to we wanna make sure that we have public safety in mind. We also recognize that recidivism is a problem and the, and the people that are in the correction system need to be trained. And it, the, the biggest thing for, to, to stop recidivism um, or reoffending is to make sure they have jobs when they get out of uh, the correctional institution. So 
that needs to be a priority. UW system budget, should we continue the freeze on resident undergrad tuition for a seventh and eighth year? Well, we have done it for the last three sessions. That was uh, $2,000 savings a year, so it, 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 uh, it saved students uh, $6,000 over the course of the last uh, three sessions. And I expect that we're going to do that again. I think the priority needs to be to make sure that we uh, make college affordable for people. And in a lot of cases, it's, it's very difficult for them if they have too uh, high of a debt load to be able to buy a house, get married, and uh, have a family. So we need to do what we can to hold things down. And some of the changes that we've made are uh, providing more money to the technical colleges so that we can get people trained earlier. We've given money to the high schools so that they can have pre-college and pre-technical college programs in those facilities in order to be able to lower the cost of uh, schooling in the future. The assembly voted both for the tax benefits and tax breaks packages for Foxconn and Kimberly Clark. Are you afraid that other Wisconsin companies are going to line up and want the same tax breaks? Well, let's talk. That's a good question. And I'm glad you brought that up because I'm a proponent of economic development. I think we need it in the state. And um, we, Foxconn, for instance, gets the money if they invest in the structure that they're the ten billion dollar structure they're planning to build. They also get the money if they have uh, 13,000 jobs that are $30,000 plus. And from what I understand, these jobs are 53,000 with benefits are 73,000. So they'll meet that criteria. Mm -hmm. But they don't get any money and there are clawbacks that are involved if they don't uh, meet the requirements of the contract that was signed. So I think we're in a pretty good place. And besides that, they've also um, invested a lot in other areas. They're, uh, they invested here in Green Bay, Eau Claire. They're doing uh, projects in Chippewa Falls and developed a relationship with nanotechnology in uh, Stout. Um, the University of Wisconsin has cut a hundred million dollar deal with them. Um, Aurora Health here in Green Bay, independent, this is all independent of the contracts we had. Mm -hmm. um, have uh, developed a program with them to look at health care benefits and uh, so there's a lot of good things that are that are coming out of this that are um, things that are going to benefit our community. The bills in the capital that would legalize recreational and medical marijuana, your positions? Um, see, we, we passed uh, uh, CBD oil this last session which provides uh, non um, um, provides that people aren't going to get high on the product. Okay. Um, and it also is beneficial for people who have problems. Uh, the issue that I have is uh, it's really federally regulated. And we know that in Kashina, which isn't very far from here, they had uh, the, the tribe had um, a field full of uh, hemp. And uh, that was burned and destroyed a while back. And so they have control over a lot of this. And so I'm waiting to see, uh, see what happens in a lot of other places. But I think that CBD oil is going to be very beneficial for people. Let's talk about health care. Um, ways to protect and expand health care in rural areas. Um, I think we need to point out, first of all, that Wisconsin is ranked number one in health care quality. And when it comes to critical access hospitals, we're the one of the top four in the country. So we have a great health care program in the state of Wisconsin. When it comes to the rural areas, I'm co-chair of an organization, uh, 501c3 that's called the Rural Health Initiative, and it includes uh, parts of the four counties I represent, or the three of the four counties that I represent, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Outagami, Wapaka and Shano counties. And I think one of the big things that we need to recognize is that we need to get out on f in the front of healthcare problems. So I'm a big proponent of wellness and prevention. 
and that's the key to uh, uh, health care in my opinion because we've done we were also hired by a company that uh, started out a few years ago and hired to do health care assessments all across the state and we found the same thing in the three counties we represent that about 58 percent problems ha uh, 58 percent of people have problems that are significant and will, could be life-threatening. They're close to a stroke or close to a heart attack. They have problems, uh, their, their veins are plugged, they have diabetes and don't know it. They have all kinds of, there are all kinds of situations, but 58% of people have problems. The other 42 uh, don't, but if it wouldn't have been for uh, the 501c3 going out to the farm mm -hmm. and uh, testing these folks and giving them recommendations on what they need to do and who they need to see, uh, they would have uh, cost. Uh, they would have cost a lot, not only to their family and their community, uh, but um, uh, when you have a crisis, it's a lot more expensive than if you can catch things on the front end and contain them. So. Healthcare to me is is really uh, really important. Now, direct primary care is something we passed in the assembly yeah. right at the end of session. Didn't pass in the Senate. It didn't pass in the Senate, but I'm hopeful that it will because I'm a very strong supporter of that uh, program. I think that if we can set up uh, contracts between patients and doctors to do the wellness and prevention, so for instance, they either pay. 50, 75, or $100 a month, but they can go in as many times as they want, they feel it's necessary, if they're not feeling good. Mm -hmm. They can get the basic lab tests done there. If there's something serious, if they need surgery or to see a specialist, that's over and above this. But this is not insurance. This is mm -hmm. wellness and prevention that needs to happen on the front end in order to be able to have healthy communities. And so I'm really, um, and the other, uh, thing that I wanted to mention was uh, we had a dental pilot that we implemented a couple of years ago. Right. Uh, we took some uh, Medi Medicaid money and um, uh, went to four counties, uh, Racine, Marathon, uh, Polk, and uh, Brown County. And uh, so that is going to make, uh, and I need to get briefed on it to find out how effective it's been. I've, they've told me that it, that there's been a lot more participation because we uh, increased the rates that dentists get paid um, and um, it's been very useful in getting people to the dentist and that weren't that weren't getting there before so there's a lot of things that are uh, that need to happen when it comes to that and I'm hoping we can expand that program get direct primary care um, uh, programs in place and other wellness and prevention programs on the front end, which I think would help us tremendously. Are you hearing, uh, hearing from caregivers? A AARP estimates that 578,000 Wisconsin residents provide care for a family member or a neighbor. Um, are, uh, uh, would you support laws or regulations that call for hospitals to recognize family caregivers when their loved ones are hospitalized? Is that, is that an issue that you've heard about? Well, I've heard about it. I, I, it hasn't, I mean, there's a lot of different studies that are being done right now to look at what, uh, what we can do. We can't do everything at one time, but we need to make sure that we, uh, we work with that. I know my brother, uh, who lives with me now, uh, has a son that's autistic and nonverbal. And uh, so I know what kind of challenges people put up Put, have to put up with when they have um, have somebody in the family that's either sick or in a situation like that. So there's definitely challenges and we need to do more. Um, um, so we'll see what we can get done this um, session. Differences between you and your opponent on November 6th? Well, um, I have both an independent and a Democrat running against me in the 6th Assembly District and uh, I think experience is number one. I have uh, lots of experience in all kinds of different areas, not just agriculture, but manufacturing and tourism, the three economic drivers in the state. I've served on a lot of uh, committees. I, I'm actually on seven committees in the legislature, but 
I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've worked out in Washington, D.C., and uh, uh, this past February I was up in uh, Canada meeting with people uh, on the uh, NAFTA uh, situation. So, so I have a lot of experience in a lot of different areas, and uh, that is probably the number one thing. Um, uh, one of the things that I think is uh, a big difference is I'm a huge supporter of the health care program we have in the state and not the universal health care program which one of my opponents uh, supports mm -hmm. because uh, we had that Governor Doyle back in 2010 tried to get that through and of course none of the Republicans were supportive of it then because it was at that time five hundred and ten uh, dollars per family uh, increase in taxes and that's that's pretty huge over and above what people were already paying so um, so there wasn't enough support in the Democratic caucus to get it passed even though they had complete control of both houses and the governorship so I'm not I'm not a proponent of that I believe in the free market system and that we can do things better we need to do things better and we need to figure things out and work to uh, create a situation that's positive and more more useful uh, and for people to lead better higher quality lives as we move forward um, also I'm not um, uh, one of my opponents is a proponent of term limits <coughs> and when uh, I'm pretty concerned about that I, I can understand where he's coming from but my concern is that um, we are elected representatives and if we are um, limited in the terms we serve and the average term in the state assembly is eight years but if we're limited then the, the agencies um, and the aides have more control they're not elected and they have more control of over what happens in the state so I'm really concerned about uh, about term limits and when Act 10 passed um, the, the two sessions after that, that session and the next, in four years, we had a 66% turnover in the state assembly. And so people don't stay forever, they stay to try to make a difference and uh, try to improve people's quality of life and then, they're, and then they move on. I understand. Republican Representative Gary Tauken of Bonduelle is seeking re-election in the 6th Assembly District. Representative, thank you for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Campaign 2018 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, Marshfield Clinic Health System, AARP Wisconsin, and Campaign 2018 partner Milwaukee Journal Sentinel.